So I'm at the stone centre and we're going to have a look at the different styles of dry stone walling and uh, in the millennium they brought together lots of dry stone wallers from across the country who created a style for their own county. And we start off with this West Yorkshire one. And you can see here, very neatly done, nice batter on it. You can see the through stones running through and they go all the way through the wall on this one. And you can see that you've got one there, one there, one there. So it's basically about every other course. And uh, they've even got one just before the top there almost like a cover band before you've got the coping on the top so a really neat one nicely coursed because all the stones are a sort of an even course they've been sorted into that and they all lock together look at that one it's got one two three four five six points of contact plenty of friction to hold the wall together and then we've got these beautiful cantilevered stepping stones through the wall uh, as you as you go through and uh, they come about the same out the other side which you can see that over the top one of the features of this wall are these hog backs so as you come up the cantilevered stepping stones you have a hog back which is much heavier to stop them getting knocked out and of course it's locked in with the friction on the copers either side let's go and have a look at one of the Cotswold walls now. And the Cotswold wall was from oolitic sort of uh, limestone, not quite as regular, not quite as coursed as the uh, West Yorkshire stone, but it's, it's nearly coursed, not quite smooth on the edge, it's still got a decent batter. The coping is more irregular. Uh, if you're familiar with Cotswold stone, it's usually slightly, slightly buffy white sort of color. Um, so again it's locked together very nicely uh, a little bit more kind of stepped whereas the west yorkshire one is very smooth on the sides but still a really nice wall but much more irregular on the tops so we move on to the south yorkshire now we've got this sort of grit stone you can feel the texture of the grit stone and we've got this sheep creek feature built into it with a nice lintel to separate the new lambs from the ewes and it's still got sort of plenty of through stones running through it and it's just slight, not quite as neat as the in terms of the smooth I should say it's neat but it's not as smooth as the, uh, the North Yorkshire one but uh, nice grit stone again the copings aren't all uh, necessarily cut evenly a little bit more irregular on the top There'll be plenty of heartings as well to pack round in the middle of it. It's still a beautiful wall, lovely, uh, lovely grit stone there on the South Yorkshire wall. Again, using the bigger stones in the bottom as you'd expect, and coming up through slightly smaller and smaller as you get just underneath the copings. They haven't got a cover band underneath, it's just smaller stones, so no wide stone underneath the copers. But nice grid stone. We've now moved to Lothian in Scotland and you can see we've got a totally different style of walling here. This is stone that was often left over from creating roads. So we've got these found stones which is sort of you know fairly big stones. Some of them are quite angular and they come up and then you've got this sort of cover stain. So that's actually protecting the wall from water and getting into the wall and freezing and then you've got your coats on top so if one of these falls off you've still got a bit of protection on your wall so the water isn't going to get in and then it's going to freeze and burst your wall they still do use through stones through the wall um, so I don't know whether on the end uh, it's got sometimes they'll use a two-thirds and a third so you can see on this one here They've used two thirds through and a third, and of course what you do is you reverse that a bit higher up, two thirds and a third, which acts the same as a through stone going all the way through the wall. You can see it's a little bit more irregular as you get to the top with this kind of stone, a lot of triangular stone, but again it makes a, a, a nice wall. Okay, so we're now into the heart of Derbyshire and as I uh, I've um, uh, been working in Derbyshire the last uh, 35 years. 
Uh, this is very familiar to me. So this is the limestone that you get in Derbyshire. So we have the white peak and we have the dark peak, which is the grit stone. So if you've walked across Derbyshire, some places have limestone like Brassington and Carsington. And then you've also got the millstone, uh, the Froggit Edge, Bircham Edge, Stanit Edge. But both of them have been worked really well here. Some excellent walling because you've got, again, the through stone going all the way through. Another through stone there. So really repeated that. So about every, almost every foot you're getting a through stone. And uh, nicely finished off with these copers, nicely shaped to give you a good coping on that. There isn't a, a cover band. You've got a nice even batter. So that's the dark peak, the grit stone. And on this side, we've got the limestone and uh, a little bit harder to shape limestone. Of course, grit stone, you can cut it any way you want with a bolster and chisel, but with the limestone, um, a little bit harder, it, it can fracture a little bit uh, easier. But still, nice even copings on the top here. Again, a good batter. Occasionally putting a, a through stone through, a little bit more irregular. Um, but nicely, no vertical joints on all of them. Really nice walling, um, another excellent wall. So two types in Derbyshire, the white peak limestone and the dark peak, which is the grit stone. We now move to South Wales into this pennant style of walling. And uh, again, we've got a grit stone, a little bit different, not as gritty as the Derbyshire one, quite a lot of iron uh, pyrite, this iron oxide, which gives you this lovely brown color in places on it. I think one of the key differences, it's quite nicely coursed, but the coping is a little bit more boxy, so it comes up as a bit more of a square rather than that rounded coping that the Derbyshire one does. Um, but again, everything else has got the throughs, it's making sure that the joints don't go vertical, and again, a good batter on them. Uh, most of it is coarse near the top, some of it, yeah, I've got jumpers in there as well to step up. Uh, but again, a, a lovely wall, slightly harder grit stone. So this one is from the Highlands, Caithness. And this is uh, a laminated uh, sandstone, almost like a, like a mudstone that's got really, really hard. Uh, the tricky thing with this wall is that because it's like flags in a way, takes quite a long time to build because there's lots of you know about two inches 50 mil pieces that you've got to put together again it's bonded very well you don't use a lot of heartings in this it's almost a full wall so you don't need little bits in it uh, of stone or even off cuts of these it pretty much fills the whole thing so because of that being that size you really it's a lot slower to build it even though it's coarsed and then you've got these slightly more irregular ones on top to give you a little bit of protection to the top of the wall. So that's the Caithness, uh, north of Scotland, bit of walling there. We're gonna go on to some different types now. Okay. This is a, a random double dyke. So dyke, they often use that word for wall in Scotland, the west of Scotland. And uh, what you have, the through stones which go through the wall are called a through band. And uh, you can see it's getting a lot more irregular on this kind of stone. So this is an igneous rock, so it's more of a, a volcanic rock, a molten rock. And so the shapes are a little bit more irregular. You start to see, sometimes it sparkles a little bit, uh, a little bit like an igneous rocks, but much more irregular, so much harder to course. They have coursed part of it, and they've had to use the the sort of triangles and bits quite well here to keep it going. It's still got the bigger material here in the bottom as you'd expect and they have got a coper, a rough coper on top to protect the wall. So quite a tough wall to build with, certainly one that you couldn't really shape very easily because igneous is very difficult to cut and to break. This is a really interesting wall, this is the Galloway boulder wall and it's a different technique in building it. You can see here they use these giant boulders and if they use the same one that's called a single dike. If they use two different types of boulders, there's a different size there to there, that's called a double dike. And when you're building this, I remember one of the great dry stone wallers Trevor Rag 
telling me about this, how you put a plank and you have to roll the boulder up a plank to put it into, into, into location, into position. So if ever you're competing, if you didn't know that, you might be trying to lift it and just a simple thing by having a little piece of wood to roll it up will, will solve that problem. And then you've got the bigger boulders here. Again, it's granite on top to stop animals jumping over to so keep it a bit wide. And uh, again, there's quite a lot of friction on the stone which locks them into place. Uh, so that's a really interesting one, a boulder wall there from Scotland. So this one is from the Isle of Skye and it's a different technique again. The stone used is basalt, a really hard rock. You know, it's even harder than granite. And they use these big pieces in the bottom to form the base of the dike. Look at those massive pieces take up a large percentage of the wall. And sometimes what they do on top, they sometimes have a boulder, but in this case they've used turf and, uh, and, and, and just sort of, you know, use that to protect the wall. And I've seen this in Cornwall where sometimes they plant it up with frift, uh, almeria or another plant to just take the moisture and stop it getting in the wall. So it's quite a nice thing to do. I've certainly built quite a few old pine walls where I've planted up the top to make it interesting and, and put the old pines in as I've gone along. But that's the Isle of Sky basalt one um, with these great boulders in the bottom. This is a Cumbrian wall, so this is quite interesting because on top of the wall, the copers, these are called cams, they face down the wall, they slope, and if you look at them, they overhang a little bit to stop animals jumping up and getting over the wall, so that's quite interesting. Um, the actual rock itself is a slate, so this is formed uh, after metamorphic rock, it's, it's, it's squashed together to create this compressed rock, this slate. So you can course it with it being slate and then obviously using the bigger stones in the bottom as foundation stones. But interesting with the cams on top. So on this is the Cheshire one and this is actually quite similar to the other sandstone ones we've seen. So again, we've got this nicely coursed sandstone which can be shaped. So that's why you're getting these nice, even sort of layers running through the wall. Uh, nice and level. Look how they've run that out to form that angle on there. And then a fairly boxy coping on top. Not as rounded as the Derbyshire one. Again, quite a chunky coping on top. They still use through stones, still use heartings in the middle. Uh, but again, it's beautifully done. Nice batter on it, pulling that in. So this is a Lancashire sandstone. Again, it's all nice and evenly coursed. You've got these Haslington flags built into these great big flags, which are put into it. Then a nice rounded coping to finish it. Again, beautifully done, creating a nice curve as you come round the wall. So this style is from Inverness, and uh, they have these sort of moor stones, very irregular. And what they do is even though they might have a piece missing, you pin it by putting a piece in there to pin the wall on the sides. It allows uh, plenty of light through to deter sheep, so they've got holes in the wall, and you've still got a sort of quite a, an irregular coping across the top of it, which has just sort of got pieces to infill. So uh, that's another style not too dissimilar to the Isles of Skye. This is a Cumbrian slate fence wall which is a bit different and what you've got to remember with these you want at least a third of the height in the ground when you put them in just so they're nice and solid and we'll just go over and have a look at one of the Welsh walls which you'd often get uh, off this dike you see some of these around the Clwyd uh, kind of wall which uh, Clwyd is actually hedge in Welsh and so it can be like a, almost like a hedge wall and you've got these glacial boulders which are sort of put together see how you have to build them, put one course and then fill the, the little gaps with the next one to try and get some sort of friction on it. And then of course the top, well, you've actually got a little bit of soil which normally is not the thing you put in a dry stone wall because it freezes, but you get away with that if you plant it up, it takes the moisture out. And uh, you sometimes see these in Cornwall as well with thrift in the top, which makes quite an interesting wall. Um, so there's a collection of different dry stone walls. If you get the chance, come to the Stone Centre in Cromford and you can see this 
and it's really interesting to see all the different county styles and they did an excellent job and they're still looking really good. See you next time.